Hey everyone, and welcome to Mike Likes Robots. And today we're going to be talking more about green grass. Now, in the last video, I talked about green grass. We talked about the concepts and the general theory. And today we're going to be looking at how to actually build components with it. We'll be using the green grass development kit and taking a look at a Python and a Java component, looking at the files and what they do, and actually seeing them in action. So let's take a look. Here we are in VS Code on a fresh EC2 instance. All that I've done so far is install Greengrass onto it so that it is a full core device, but I haven't installed any other components onto it. I've also checked out the repository that I'm going to be using as a demonstration. These, uh, these packages aren't far off what is produced by the template, but um, has a little bit extra functionality that I can talk to and show a couple of extra things. So first, let me show you the GitHub page. Here it is, and I will link this in the description. All this is, is a repository containing two packages, one in Java and one in Python, that show how to make components that produce hello MQTT messages once per second. That's also why we've got the test client up. We can subscribe to hash, and then see if one or both of our components are producing messages as we expect. So let's see how to build these components. The instructions are here, and the first thing we want to do is make sure we have both Python and build tools for Java. So we can run this command, which makes sure we have everything. And this machine is an Ubuntu machine, so uh, the apt command works. Once that's complete, we want to install the Greengrass development kit. Now there's a link here, and I'll link it in the description as well. But what this is, is a command line tool for being able to build and publish components. It has other functionality, but that's what we'll be using it for today. So I can copy this and plug it in here, and then wait for the build to complete. So before we continue with the instructions, I want to show you how you could build the packages from scratch, if that's what you prefer to do. Now the GDK has, ah, I just tried to reinstall the JDK and realized that it gives me the problem in an error message. We need to add this file to the path. So I'm just going to open up uh, bash RC, and by exporting path as the existing value of the path plus the binary directory, we should now have access to the JDK. Great. Now, what the JDK can do for us, we can check using the help flag, and at every stage, it's got um, major things it can do, and component is what we'll be using it for today. So we can use GDK component help, and it can tell us what to do. So in it is uh, what you can use to build projects from scratch. You can use a template or a repository from the software catalog. So let's take an example, and we want to build the Hello World Python. Uh, we can do that using GDK component, initialize in it, and then we want to give it the arguments it needs. And we can see those by doing help. And we can see what we need is dash n, we can give it the name. So we'll give it Python example as a name. The language will be Python. And the template, although it doesn't say, I know it is hello world written in camel case. Once that's done, we can see a new folder within our repository, which is the default package generated from the template. We can do this with Java as well, but those are the only two languages supported uh, from the tool at the moment. Now, it comes with tests. I don't have tests in the packages that I'm using, uh, but you can use this default project to see how to build tests for your code. And I'll delete that Python example package because we'll be using the other packages. OK, so the next step is to configure the packages. And whether you're building from scratch or from this repository, you'll need to do this. Now, we need to override the configuration files for both the Python and the Java versions of these components. So for the author, I'm just going to put Mike uh, nice and simple, and then the version I'm going to use 1.0.0. This is uh, semantic versioning, which uh, Greengrass follows. For the placeholder bucket, you can give it any name. I tend to use Greengrass components, and if you know S3, you know the bucket name has to be unique across all accounts, not just your own account. Uh, but thankfully, the GDK when it builds will produce a bucket name. It will take this as the base and add some details onto it so that it is guaranteed unique for your account. Uh, my region will be US West 2. And with that, that's my configuration complete. I can also do the same for the Java version.
Mike 100. We can use the same bucket and the same region. So that's all we need to do. Now we can test that we're able to build these components. So for each one, I'll go into Python and do a GDK component build. And that works almost immediately. I'll do the same for Java, and then we'll take a look at what the files are doing. And that's a build success. OK, let's dig into what the files are doing a bit. There's a few important files that we need to take a look at. The ones that are the same in both repositories are the GDK config and the recipe. Now, the recipe is an important part of the Greengrass component. It's what defines the default permissions and how to run the artifacts that are in the component. So, for example, in Python's case, we can define a message. So, whatever message we define is what will be sent inside the MQTT message. And we need to define access control. We need to give our component permission to send those MQTT messages into IoT Core. This block of text here will allow us to publish to IoT Core on all topics. That's what the star means. Further down, we've also got the manifest, which I did uh, discuss in the last video. Uh, in this case, we need to specify that the zip file that is being generated is Python MQTT hello, and you need to unzip it to get at the artifacts inside it. Then there's a lifecycle step and a run step. This lifecycle install step is how you can include extra dependencies for your Python package. And it differs from the Java package here. For Python, all we're doing is taking the source files and bundling them into a zip. We're not actually bundling up any of the dependencies. Instead, we're bundling up this requirements.txt. This defines what pip dependencies we have so that when it's installed on the target system, it can install those dependencies. So what we do is, in the lifecycle stage install, we tell Greengrass to install everything from the requirements.txt as the, as the Greengrass user. Once that's completed successfully, we're able to run the main.py file within that unzipped folder. As you can see here, we need to have Python 3 available on the target system, as well as pip to be able to install those dependencies. We can't define that as part of this recipe, we can only inform our customers before asking them to deploy the component that they have these uh, that they have these dependencies installed. So that's the recipe. That's one of the most important files in the Greengrass component, and we'll compare it now to the Java version. So broadly, they're very similar. There's a number of placeholder tags that come from the GDK. When the GDK builds, it will fill these fields in for us. And our message is the same, and our access control is also the same. However, in this case, we're not using a zip unarchive method. Instead, our artifact is a jar file, which contains all of our dependencies already from the Maven build. So we don't have to have an extra install step to install the dependencies. We just define the run step. And we define within this jar file, run this main class, and then we can give it the parameters exactly the same as passing the parameters over here. So that's our recipes. Next, we'll take a look at the GDK config. We'll take a look at the Python on the left and the Java on the right. In this case, I'll just remove that. That was mistakenly plugged in from before. Now, what we're doing is we're telling GDK what uh, fields to fill in when it builds the package for us. So it fills in the author and the version. It also says that on the Python side, the build system is a zip. You should take the files and zip them all together. On the Java side, we're using Maven as a build system, which means it will do a Maven build. That's why we need to install that dependency. And in both cases, we're uploading the dependencies to the same place. Now, the way that these packages differ is in the build systems used for them. So as we've already said with Python, it's a zip build, which is why when we do the component build step, we produce this zip build folder. This is all the raw files that will be going into the zip file, as well as the zip file produced. So as you're building your own components, if you need to use this zip archive method, you can see exactly what's gone in here, and you can see what zip file has been produced here.
Once that zip has been produced, it's copied into the Greengrass build folder. Now, the structure of this is generated by GDK and it is very specific. It needs to be the exact name of the component followed by the exact version number. Then the zip file inside it needs to match the file name within the recipe.yaml. Otherwise, when you try to install it on Greengrass, it won't know where the zip file is. In fact, if we go to the local deploy step, it will realize it can't find it locally, try to find it in S3, realize it can't find it there either, and then give us an error that it can't find it in S3. You may have come across this if you tried to do a local deploy and it started telling you that there was an error in S3, that's because it couldn't find it locally. What's actually inside our source file is very simple. There's a main file which just constructs our hello client. And this is only really split into two files so that we can show that a source directory can contain files that are included in the zip file. The hello client just uses this AWS IoT, which is uh, a publicly available PIP package that knows how to do IPC communication with Greengrass, which is how we're doing the MQTT publish. We can just use the library exactly as it's intended to publish the message. And the final file that we haven't talked about yet is this local deploy. This will come in handy when we want to test the Greengrass component locally before we publish it. What we do is we do the GDK component build that we've already run on the command line, and then we can do a deployment create. And by passing it a specific recipe and artifact directory, which are local, we're saying, hey, check here first for the component that I'm telling you to install before you check in S3. And if we're not able to find Python MQTT hello with this exact version number in that folder, then it will fail on the install section. That's everything to see on the Python side. Now let's take a look at the folder structure of the Java side. Now the difference here is that we're using Maven to specify how to build our dependencies and our source code. So here we've specified a dependency on the device SDK for Java, which is doing exactly the same operation as in Python. It's producing an IPC operation that asks Greengrass to publish a message to IoT Core on our behalf. This is how we specify the dependency. And then when we do the build, it ends up in this Java MQTT hello jar file. So this is the, the build directory that is created by GDK and the final jar file is copied into Greengrass build. Again, that artifacts folder has the exact structure it needs, and the recipes folder has the generated recipe.yaml. So instead of having component name, it's actually got those fields filled out, and we can check that those are exactly what we expect. So that's what the GDK is doing when it does a component build. What we can do now is run a local deploy for each of those components and see them working. We can do a deployment create step if we copy it and fill it out ourselves. But if you want to skip that step, you can uh, just run the local deploy file from each package as it is. So in this case, for Java, we can run dot slash scripts local deploy. This will ask the Greengrass on the system to do a local deployment of the component and start running it. The deployment is submitted, but we don't know that it's worked. And there's a couple of ways that we can check it's worked. The first and simpler method we can do is check that it's working as it's supposed to, as in it's publishing MQTT messages into IoT Core. So let's open up that MQTT test client. And we can see that we're getting the message hello from Java. And that's coming in every second that updates. So that's working exactly as we've intended. Now, the other way that we can do it if we go back to VS Code is that we can check the logs. Now the logs are kept in slash greengrass slash v2 slash logs. And they're kept in there individually. Now if I run vim from the logs directory, it will show me all of the files available in there. There's a few different log files. Generally, if they've got a date and time on them, that's a historical log file. When the component has been running long enough, Greengrass will automatically roll over to a new log file and save the old log file with a timestamp. So the file that we really want is uh, greengrass.log, which is the general log for the Greengrass system. And if we skip to the end, we can see that there's been a deployment failure, which 
hasn't affected us because as we can see here, it's the MQTT broker from EMQX that is in a broken state. So we can actually ignore this because our component is working as it should. Now, if we go back, we can also go into the specific log for our component. I always check the Greengrass log first because it will tell me if a component has failed to deploy for some reason. And then if the component has deployed, I will check the individual components log file to see if it has anything interesting for me. And all this is doing is saying it successfully published the message. So we can back out of here and then we can go into the Python directory and run the same command. So scripts, local deploy. And it's submitted the deployment. Again, our log file should appear. It's Python MQTT instead, and it is running successfully, which we should see if we again switch to the MQTT test client. And we can see alternating messages. One is hello from Java. Let's pause it. One is hello from Java, and one is hello from Python. So both of our components have the correct permissions and are running on our Greengrass core producing MQTT messages. Now, as you're developing components, it doesn't always work the first time. You're going to want to try multiple iterations. As a, a trick that uh, is very useful to know when you're doing local deployments. And the reason for the trick is that Greengrass is very particular about version numbers. It assumes that if it's had version 100 deployed to it, then if it's ever told to deploy version 100 again, that they are the same version with the exact same contents. So if that Greengrass core device already has that component deployed on it, even if it has different source files, it will assume it's already installed and run exactly the same version. There's two ways around this. One is that you can remove the component and then reinstall it, or a slightly simpler way is to just bump the version number every time you do a deployment. So in here, we can bump the version up to 101, and in the scripts, we can bump the version up to 101. That means that when we publish, the version we publish will also be 101, but we can roll that back to whatever version number we want when it comes to deployment. Which brings us on to publishing. Now that we have built the component locally, and we've tested it running and seen those MQTT messages appearing, now we want to publish. And this is really simple. As long as you've got the AWS CLI with correct configuration, you should be able to just run GDK component publish for each of those components. Let's try that now. In Python, GDK component publish, unable to locate credentials. So that means I haven't set up my credentials on this system. And now I have those credentials set up. Let's try that component publish again. This time it's found the credentials and created the private version 101 of Python MQTT hello. We'll repeat the process in the Java, that's GDK component published. And it's created private version 100. Now, if we head into the console and we go into Greengrass and click components, now we have a couple of new components available. The publisher is Mike, and we can see it's Python MQTT hello and Java MQTT hello. And we can also see the versions that they've been published with. So now if we create any Greengrass installation on another machine, we'll be able to deploy these components and change the configuration that we saw in that recipe.yaml. There, we've seen how to build two custom Greengrass components, one in Java and one in Python. We've seen what the contents of the files do in them, and we've seen how to build, test locally, and publish them to our AWS account. Now I encourage you to check out the repository for yourself, or try and build it from scratch. Take things out and see if you can break it. Add new features and see what it takes to get them working. Take a look at how the permissions work and see if you really understand it. Thank you for listening. Let me know your thoughts, and I'll see you in the next one.